was uh, when Roger first joined the band. I was still playing guitar and I began to hone a more rhythmic style that would lock in with his drumming. We were venturing outside the punk bubble musically and had a social life to manage. We liked going to wine bars such as Hawkins, next door to Virgin Records on Corporation Street. No, I don't want to read this one. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna fit I'm gonna do this this one and then we're gonna that's gonna be the end of the readings. Okay, okay this is this is about the last chapter in the book is Coachella. We played Coachella last year and it was a fantastic experience. And uh, I, you know, having kids uh, and, and, and raising them in, in Los Angeles, you know, I was very aware of what a signi what how significant, you know, an experience Coachella was. And um, I felt if we couldn't get on that show sooner or later, my kids were never going to speak to me again. <laughs> <laughs> so, behind the stage, to the side of the ramp, our band has gathered. We've stepped off the pair of golf carts that have brought us the half mile from our dressing room in battery-powered silence. The air is warm and electric blue. We acknowledge each other without words, using nods and smiles, back slaps and other gestures of encouragement. Instincts surge, every other concern falls away. Since 1981, we've released our songs on vinyl, cassette tape, CD, digital audio tape, mini disc, ringtones, MP3, streaming and download for purchase or rental. I've long since learned to relax and cease worrying about how the music finds its way to your ears. Just play, just write. As long as I keep those calluses on my fingertips hard and maintain an enthusiasm for making music, I'll be happy most of the time. We've come a long way, to, we've come a long way together to get to this holy place, Coachella, and a lot has changed in the last 30 years. Cell phones, computers, SUVs, nose hair trimmers, <laughs> supplements, Propecia, <laughs> paperless itineraries, in-room humidifiers, steam rooms, saunas, and gyms, pre-show pre massage, Twitter, Spotify, and Amazon, touring with, with 3,000 songs in my pocket and 30 books on an iPad, therapy by Skype, great coffee everywhere. Another difference is out there where there are just as many men as women in the audience tonight. At day's end, my job is to be a catalyst for connectivity, to help bring people closer together, men and women, boys and girls. That's what the music has done for me. What hasn't changed are the notes that run up and down the neck of the bass, and the feeling that hits you when one note rubs against another in a way that sets the hair up on the back of your neck, and the sound of the crowd, and the feeling of adrenaline that charges through my body when I hear it, holding that four-string machine gun on stage, less than six feet away from you. Simon is, on Simon is running through his vocal warm-ups, which we so often rib him about. Nick has a plastic cup in his left hand, and he's taking sips from it now reaching his right hand upward to flash a snapshot on his camera. We all fiddle with our in-ear monitors, trying the volume, listening for interference. A photographer from Spin Magazine wants to take a picture. We assemble reluctantly, everyone just wanting to get on with the show. It's an outdoor festival, so tour manager Craig will not get to give his usual cue to take the house lights down. Tonight, that is one of God's jobs, and what a job of it he is doing. A glittering bauble of sunlight fights to stay above the horizon. A full moon appears, a late-coming VIP that takes a seat above the lighting gantry at 11 o'clock high. Nature presents for us a better light show than any human could ever have created. A perfect breeze causes my Buddha scarf to flutter. All the signs are good. We walk together up the ramp. The stage is set, the electronics are primed, the audience ready. Nick walks on first in a black net snood borrowed from Lady Gaga. <laughs> he walks across the stage and onto his riser, puts down his camera and touches the Andromeda synthesizer, from which issues forth a sample of the exact sound he used to begin our first single, Planet Earth, written and recorded over 30 years ago. My heart is pounding. There is no better time than this when I am about to take the stage and the future belongs to me. This is what the moment feels like as I walk out onto the stage one more time. Roger's drums kick in, an eight-bar count, and I'm in with him, the galloping groove that started it all for me. 30,000 California kids, eyes and teeth smiling, cameras and cell phones popping, a million tiny seductions all at once. And the music never sounded better. <laughs>